Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, you'll learn about the new background rendering functionality in the Flame 2020 products. This is available on single GPU Linux configurations as well as dual GPU Linux configurations. This is currently not available on the Mac platform because the background rendering technology is based on the Burn Remote Rendering which is also Linux only. Now background rendering, also known as background reactor, works on your creative workstation and does not require the investment in a remote rendering farm. So you can start using background reactor regardless of the size of your facility and without lots of extra investment in additional rendering hardware. Some facilities are already using burn remote rendering due to the nature of their work and that requires significant investment in rendering servers to take on the workload. But Background Reactor works on your local workstation at no extra cost. To add to this, Background Reactor works with various supported graphics cards which are listed on the Flame System Requirements page. If you're using a dual GPU configuration, Background Reactor will work straight away using the second GPU for background rendering. But very importantly, the GPU cards need to be identical models. If you're using a single GPU configuration, this will also work and the resources of the single GPU will be spread between Flame and Background Reactor. This should work fine for most tasks, but if you need more resources for heavy compositing or GPU decoding in Flame, you can manually configure the memory management to ensure the optimum performance between Flame and any background rendering tasks. I'll cover those settings at the end of this video. Finally, Background Reactor is available in all parts of the Flame products. But automatic background rendering is only available in Conform, Timeline, Effects Environment and Batch Effects. This is the same for Flame and Flame Assist. For Flare Artists, you would need to open your clip as a sequence and you'll be able to access automatic background rendering. Please note that this video is not footage specific, so please use your own media to follow along. Now when you launch Flame, the background reactor services are not automatically running. This ensures that Flame still uses your full system's resources unless you explicitly turn on the background rendering service. That's really simple to do. Just click your Render button and in the pull down menu, choose Background Reactor Auto. The button turns light blue and the service is now running in the background. Now, automatic background rendering works on a couple different levels and will first start off in the sequence. For example, you would select Segment and apply a Timeline Effects. I'll choose 2D Transform but you can use whatever you want. Using the Mini Effects toolbar, I'll perform a quick pan and scan of the current frame. Now with the segment selected, you can make adjustments and see your effects being applied. Nothing is being rendered at this point because it would become annoying to try render this while you're still making adjustments and the segment is still the current selection. But as soon as you move off the current selection and deselect it, Flame sends the job off to Background Reactor and you can carry on working on your next shot. You can see the segment rendering in the sequence as well as monitor the progress in the message bar below. So the idea is once you've finished working on the second segment, you can review the render in the first. As soon as the focus returns to the first segment, the second segment is also sent to Background Reactor. This allows you to continue working and keep the session as interactive as possible. As a tip, if you copied or applied an effect to a multi-selection of segments, Flame won't send all of them immediately to Background Reactor in case you need to review and tweak them. So you'll need to scroll through each one, either with the focus or selection, and then they will be automatically rendered. Now before we move on to the next example, 
I'd like to point out that it is possible to toggle between foreground and background rendering during the current session. The background reactor service will continue to run while Flame is running. Once you exit Flame, the background reactor services will also stop freeing up system resources. It is also possible to set your preference for foreground or background rendering. Just open up the main preferences menu and go to the general settings. Under the default rendering options, you can choose between foreground and background reactor rendering. So you choose whichever rendering method meets your current needs. I'd also like to point out the background tasks, which contain an option called Protect Playback. This will pause any background tasks when media is playing, and it's on by default. Now let's return back to the sequence and look at how automatic background rendering works within the effects environment. Place your positioner on a new segment and click the Effects tab. So the current segment is the focus and selection in the storyboard and is ready for any grading or VFX finishing. Now, very importantly, the render settings in the timeline view are independent from the render settings in the effects environment. This allows you to customize different render behaviors depending where you are working. So if you want automatic background rendering in the effects environment, you need to click the pull down menu and choose Background Reactor Auto. With all that set up, you can begin doing your grading and VFX work. For example, I'll use the Master Grade to give this shot a particular look. You can scrub the time bar to preview the result, but it is not rendering. As soon as you move to another shot using the storyboard, the job is submitted to Background Reactor and you get the render indications above the thumbnail. Let's give this shot a quick grade. Returning back to the first shot, the second shot is submitted to the Background Reactor. While this is happening, you can review and even play the render result in the first shot. And by that time, the second shot is also rendered and ready for review. Obviously, the render speeds will depend on the time on effects or batch effects complexity, but it will keep processing away in the background. Now, one thing that can be guaranteed to happen is that you've been working on a shot and you automatically sent it to the background render. But then you've realized you need to make a change to it. As soon as you return to the shot, and it may be in the render queue, or it could still be rendering, Background Reactor will cancel the render and you can make any changes you want. As soon as you move on to the next shot, Flame will resubmit the job to Background Reactor and it will be placed in the render queue again. So automatic background rendering should not get in the way of being productive. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this functionality is available in the Conform, Timeline, Effects Environment and Batch Effects. In Batch, you do have background and foreground rendering, but you need to explicitly execute the render as that is more appropriate for that workflow. Now, I also mentioned that if you have two identical cards in your Linux system for the dual GPU configuration, you don't need to do anything in terms of configuring the memory management for Background Reactor. The specific resources are managed by the two GPUs. However, it is a different story for a single GPU configuration. By default, the resources are balanced between Flame and Background Reactor. So you may never need to adjust anything. However, if you find Flame is struggling with heavy composites or active GPU tasks like GPU debayer, etc., you may want to manually configure the resources to give more or less between Flame and Background Reactor. So here are some suggestions for two configuration files. In the Flame init.cfg file, you need to set the memory consumption target keyword to 45%. You also need to set the graphics memory consumption keyword to 55%. Remember to remove the hash symbol at the beginning of the line to apply the memory assignments. 
This frees up resources which you'll assign to Background Reactor. So in the Background Reactor init.cfg file, change the Graphics Memory Consumption Target keyword to 35% and ensure the hash is also not present at the beginning of the line. The next time you start Flame, it will use the allocated resources between Flame and Background Reactor. Hopefully you'll find background rendering and its automation useful, as well as a big time saver in your everyday productions. Don't forget to also check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to Flame 2020. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos and thanks for watching.